Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Lee Bloom from Gigaspaces. And today we will talk about how digital integration hubs shift from databases to data grids. Just in a nutshell, Gigaspaces. We are Gigaspaces. We provide distributed in-memory processing and storage of data. Uh, we have hundreds of customers, two one customers, and thousands of deployments. Um, and let's start with, uh, let's say that you're an architect and uh, you have this dilemma now, you have this use case. Um, you have a multinational price comparison website and you have millions of different unique users. Um, every day you have 100 million price updates. Um, you have many different data sources and many different formats for that, for that data. And you want to provide both operational and analytical workloads on your data architecture. And not only that, uh, you know, as all uh, retail websites, you have peaks. Sometimes they're planned, like, I know, Black Friday, and sometimes, sometimes they're not planned, like COVID, for instance. You know, everybody are uh, ordering toilet paper all of a sudden. So sometimes it can be like 20 times increase in your workloads. So probably what you want to build is a digital integration hub. And what is it, actually? I mean... Uh, many people still uh, are not aware of digital integration hubs. Um, basically, many, many people know uh, operational data stores. Well, this is like the next generation of operational data stores because they also provide analytics. And this is actually was coined uh, just last year by Gartner. Um, and this is an architecture that aggregates data from multiple systems of record and creates a low latency, scale out, high performance data store that provides both operational and analytical workloads. So, um, yeah, so, you know, sometimes it's an architecture, as you can see here. Um, you have on the bottom, you have all the systems of record, then you have some sort of an ETL process on top of that, or some sort of a CDC. Then you have a data layer, you have some analytics on that, on that data, and you have APIs and services on that data serving uh, BI reports, uh, applications, your digital applications, and so on. So uh, it can be an architecture made up of many different vendors, but also it can be an out-of-the-box solution. So when you look at most of the you know, uh, DIH architectures, um, there are many limitations to those, those architectures, and it, it's really great building them, and, but like, very rapidly you see the problems. Um, mostly what we see when, you know, when we find customers that look for uh, solutions to their problems, they complain about um, performance and latencies and low concurrency, and they have problems with scalability um, they have uh, uh, low agility of how to develop uh, applications on this complex architecture. Many different, uh, many different modules in this in this architecture, and they have problems with availability. So that's actually our offering is all about an out of the box uh, DIH solution, and it is based on a data grid and not on a database, and that's. What, what I want to show you first is what is a data grid just in a nutshell and then explain the differences and why data grids are proving to be a very efficient way to create inter, uh, digital integration hubs. Um, so, you know, a database, you have uh, in a very simplistic way, you have a client, you have some business logic, and then you have the database itself. It can be either uh, like on one machine, it can be distributed, but anyway, it just... Uh, one database that serves the data, but on the other hand, when you use a data grid, you have the client, but then all your logic and your data reside, reside on the same grid. So it's partitioned, it's scale out, but still you have co-location of processing and data. Now that has many different advantages. I'm gonna focus on um, just uh, like three of them, the main three advantages that are uh, for the for the part of data grids, because when you use 
processing separate processing in database um, you have serialization, you have networking overheads between the client and the business logic and then uh, the database itself. On the other hand, when you use a data grid, everything is direct access. When you run co-located, when you know how to partition your data and run your code in a distributed manner, you actually save all the serialization. Data is accessed natively in the same memory space. So this is like orders of magnitude faster, it's like you see performance uh, rising from hundreds of thousands of, of like tens and hundreds of thousands of events per second to tens of millions of events per second. Um, additionally, uh, when you talk about have availability and high availability, you know, when you have many different moving parts, you need to manage all of them and create their own high available, highly available solutions for each one of the moving parts. And then you need to load balance and you need to have switches. And it's very, uh, uh, and, and routers to, to manage this complex structure. And when there's a failure, it's really hard to debug it. It's really hard to, 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 to actually manage it. And I was in, in like, uh, previous experiences, I, I was managing like, very large systems and creating a DR solution was almost impossible. Creating a, like a, uh, disaster recovery, what happens when the whole data center is down? How do I replicate everything? How do I sync everything? It was really, really complicated. Now, that's the beauty of data grids, because when you have a single um, operation, a single framework that manages, manages both your data and your processing, uh, high availability is given to you out of the box. It means that when a node is down, you don't have to worry about how your processing and your data uh, um, clusters will sync because it's all provided to you by the same platform. This is highly, highly important. It's very important when you talk about digital integration hubs. Now, the third part is about elasticity. Um, so again, when you look at a database, you look at different layers of processing, you need to manage all those layers. And when you want to scale, you need to scale separately those those different clusters. Uh, it's more complicated. Um, sometimes you want only to scale the data, then you need to scale the processing and see that everything is in sync. Um, when you scale your data grid, you don't have to worry about it. You just say, I want to add another node. All the running processes, either they have a state or they don't have a state, all the data, everything scales seamlessly without you actually worrying about it. So looking back at you know, our, the, the, the story that we started from, it wasn't actually just a story. This is an actual customer. This is a story of Price Runner, one of our customers. It's a large price comparison uh, website. They have millions of offers that they serve in milliseconds. And they use the digital integration hub. This is their primary data source. Um, they, when they moved from a traditional database to in-memory dig digital integration hubs, they re reduce their ingestion time from like a day to a few seconds. It's incomprehensible, you know, the, the magnitude of moving to this model. Uh, the second thing is uh, their response time was cut by half, um, also like serving the website itself. Um, also, they had peaks. This is the, like the graph that you see here. On the slide, you see this is an actual footage of the of the workload that they have on a regular day and the workload that they had on Black Friday just one year ago. And what you can see here that they have 20 times the normal traffic and they have five times more concurrent sessions, and still performance wasn't impacted. I mean, this is not only reducing the response time. The thing is that the previous solution couldn't scale. And now this is a solution that can scale. It can even scale automatically based on the workload and still keeping that 300 millisecond response time of the website. So this is another thing. And the third thing, which is really important, is the agility of releasing new services. Because they release between 10 to 15 features every day to their website. And th we see that with many customers. The thing is that once you write Java code and you already have everything managed and you just need to deploy it and it will know it will know automatically how to work with the data, how to work locally with the data when it can, how to optimize 
to have local access and not remote access of the data and having that significant improvement, you save a lot of work of actually working on your performance and your application development. And they actually told us about, you know, when COVID first started, it took them two days from idea to production. They added a module to um, uh, provide uh, their customers help to find a face mask and hand sanitizers. So this is a very quick development cycle. You know, we have a bank that is based uh, on our digital integration hub, and they say that it takes them one day from idea to production, and they have 1,000 services running on the data grid. So this is the reason that, you know, they, these are just two cases that, uh, that I have time to talk about now of customers that seen how the move from traditional, um, traditional digital integration hubs to data grid-based uh, DIH solutions they manage to have faster performance, more concurrency, more availability, and more agility in their development. So that's all we have for today. But if you have any questions besides the question that we can take now, you can always contact me or use this link or QR code and read more about digital integration hubs and how data grids can be the next step of your digital integration hub. Uh, that's it. Thank you.